Hurricanes Arthur, Bertha, and Cristobal have left our island alone, but who knows what's going to happen with Dolly and then beyond. Hilton Head's Emergency Management Coordinator Tom Dunn joins us. Well, let's go back actually a couple of three months. While you guys are, you know, normally kind of getting prepared, kind of figuring out what the lay of the land might be for a summer storm season, the coronavirus hits and you guys even get involved in all of that. Explain that a little bit. Uh, absolutely. We, uh, for COVID-19, we went ahead and opened our emergency operations center back in March. Uh, I believe it was somewhere around the 16th we opened the EOC sure. and began began functioning. We began planning, prepping, um, buying the personal protective equipment that uh, that our first responders needed to protect themselves as they went out and uh, took okay. care of the community. How's that going, by the way, as we <clears throat> extend things out? Are we in pretty good shape on uh, on PPE? Uh, right now we are in we're in pretty good shape we were able to uh, secure the items that we needed fairly early so that good. that put us in a pretty good spot but we continue to search to make sure we have the appropriate inventories available i was going to say we're knocking on wood i'm looking for some wood to talk about <laughs> now we get into storm season mm -hmm. this is the time when you guys really get busy mm -hmm. but the coronavirus again kind of affected your preparations for all of that uh, tell me mm -hmm. what you guys have had to do differently to get ready mm -hmm. for for this hurricane season well, f for us, the biggest thing is is our staff and our personnel, <clears throat> um, and evaluating who we need, when we need them, and then it's going to take us a little more time to evacuate those personnel to get them into a safe place and to maintain that social distancing that we need to do for for our staff as the the, the same way the public is is social distancing. So you guys have gotten really good at Zoom and Skype and all that stuff. Huh? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of extra resources do we have and, and are we going to need uh, between now and the first time uh, we stare another storm in the face? Well, for us, it, it for us it boils down to the, the personal protective equipment that we, okay. we think we have pretty good stores of. But the public needs to start thinking about their evacuation plan and their emergency kit and adding those extra, uh, we'll call them COVID-19 yeah. supplies. The, the, the antiseptic wipes, the hand sanitizer, multiple masks if you evacuate. You want to make sure you have multiple masks with you so you'll have a clean mask to wear. Now, how long, uh, with a regular cloth mask that we've all become used to wearing, how long or often should we wear them before we make sure we clean them up, wash them? Sure. I wash mine daily. Um, I, have, okay. I have several, so I wash them daily to make sure that they, they, they are clean. Okay. Uh, anything mm -hmm from a from a storm standpoint anything mm -hmm. you think might be different or any changes you've made since mm -hmm. last year's storms uh, to get ready for this year well, really for us our biggest changes have been related to the COVID-19 yeah. <laughs> and how, how we respond to those um, getting those additional supplies for us educating the public on also thinking about you know where you're going you, mm -hmm. take a little bit more time to think about where you're going what are the rules where you're going are you are you going to another state where that that's good the, point. the, the rules may be different in other states from masks no masks where you have to wear a mask um, are the restaurants open how many right. restaurants are open so you need to take all those things into account as you begin to make those evacuation plans and folks who are used to going to visit family <laughs> Does the family really want to see you Fair. this time around, right? You've Fair. got a, you've got a really. Uh, well, I read somewhere where you guys are even suggesting maybe two or three alternate ideas of places to go, uh, directions mm -hmm. to take uh, if if you have to yeah. evacuate. Absolutely, that yeah. that's my plan for my family. We have three pre-designated locations that we go to. Uh, we make contact with those those locations annually. It's a combination of family and hotel, but it's in three different locations, so we have those options available. And that's something we could be mm -hmm. doing now. Absolutely. Now's the time to, uh, if you haven't done so, develop that evacuation plan, develop that emergency kit, get those extra supplies that you do need if you do evacuate. And and think about if you do use those supplies when you evacuate, mm -hmm. try to restock before you come back. Yeah, that's that's a good mm -hmm. idea as well. Uh, one other thing, the, the governor the, over the last four years mm -hmm. has been uh, pretty quick to pull the trigger and to get mm -hmm. us evacuating. And the problem with that is mm -hmm. folks are not always taking him maybe as seriously as, mm -hmm. as you all might want uh, to have happen. Um, what's the best way to, to, to know, okay, yeah, this is real. This, this, we better, we, we better get out and we better get out now versus, okay, we got five days and uh, we don't think it's coming here anyway. Uh, I think the best thing, the best advice I could give folks is yeah. to listen to the governor's order. Okay. Um, it's a lawful and legal order. Mm -hmm. So it also, it takes a lot of time to evacuate the coast. So a lot of times that's why that, that evacuation order comes as early as it does. But it also gives you time to get your things together and evacuate and get to that location inland that, that you've pre-identified and decided where you're going to go. All right. Smart call. Thank you so much, Tom. Hilton Head Emergency Management Coordinator Tom Dunn.